Hello, this video is section 5.4 from the Larson book, Sampling Distributions and the Central Limit Theorem. All right, now what we're interested in here is instead of looking at random variable x, we are looking at a sampling distribution. Suppose the random variable is now x bar, meaning the sample mean. And, and so we'll be looking at finding probabilities that the average of a group of things selected are less than or greater than or between two numbers versus just selecting one item like we have been doing. Um, so let's take a look at what we got here. And the central limit theorem is a very useful and important theorem in statistics. And let's, we'll come back and take a, we'll take a look at it here right now. And, and I'll kind of explain what was in the writing here a little bit as we go. Okay. The central limit theorem, especially part one, is suppose you, you, you take a, a distribution of data that's kind of weird looking. I'll come down here and show you. Uh, like that in the upper left corner. Looks like mountains. That's like saying any population distribution, meaning that one is clearly not normal distributed, normally distributed. So that's what we're getting at. So the central limit theorem basically says that if you if your samples are size n, where n is 30 or more, now it's better the larger the samples. That makes it a better result. But as far as we're concerned, 30 is the magic number. Drawn from any population with a mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma, then the sampling, the distribution of the sample means, mean if you mean if, if those if those means, the average of those 30 or whatever, and you plotted those individually, they would approximate a normal distribution. So you know there could be a situation where if you were uh, wanting to find a probability of an individual value in a, in a distribution, you could if it wasn't normal, you couldn't use the normal distribution. Um, but if it's me size of 30 or more, you could use X probability of an X bar. So let's come down here and take a look. I'm just, I'll come back up to this, but see, so seeing this is showing you this distribution mean standard deviation. If N is more than 30 and you plotted a bunch of X bars, all the, you know, took 30, 30 at a time and plotted them all the, as individual values. In other words, meaning each sample mean of the 30 or more that you're choosing is its own little value. So it would plot out to be normally distributed. So that's very convenient, very useful. All right. Now the second part of this, which relates to the pictures on the right. The second theorem just says, all right, if the population itself is normally distributed, the sampling distribution of sample means is normally distributed for any size n. Meaning if the original data is normally distributed, the sample size could be 5 and your x bar will still be normally distributed. The, the, the first part of this is where it really kicks in with a 30 or more. And um, so you see here's the, if it's a normal distribution, uh, any size n it's still normally distributed. It's a little bit thinner. I'll tell you why here in a minute. Because that's not real critical, but I'll explain to you anyway why that happens. All right. Now this is going to be very important, especially the standard deviation. You know, anytime we're given a problem in a normal distribution situation, or even if it's not normally distributed and we're using the central limit theorem, they're giving you just the regular mean and standard deviation of x itself, not x bar. So to do probabilities for x bar, we are going to need to know what the mean and standard deviation for x bar will be, the population mean. So this basically says if you take all possible sample means of whatever size they are from your data and, you, and then treat that as a population, every one of them, and you average them, it's going to be exactly the same. I just wanted to use a subscript X here because without the X, that's what it really means. Meaning the, the population mean of the sample means is the same thing as the population mean of the original data. So you use the exact same number. Now here's where the difference lies for standard deviation. 
when it's standard deviation, the population standard deviation for all those sample means is going to be the population standard deviation of the original data divided by the square root of n, where n is whatever the sample size is, which obviously that's a number that will be given to you in a problem. So this, this term is also known as the standard error of the mean. So just in case some problem on a homework asks, you know, hey, well, find the standard error. It's just what this is, a standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so we already talked about this. Now let's try an example of just identifying the mean and standard deviation of x bar. Okay, snowfall, mountain ranges, mean has 100 and standard deviation of 14. That's assumed to be for the value x itself. Suppose snowfalls are sampled during randomly picked years. For samples of size 49, determine the mean and standard deviation of x bar. Now here's where it's really easy to fall into a, a trap here and pick the wrong answer. And actually, answer B is the trap that you do not want to fall into. Because it might be real easy to look at this and go, we got a mean 100 and a standard deviation of 14. So that means I'm going to pick answer B because I see a 100 and I see a 14. Well, that's only half correct. We look back up here. Yes, the mean is the same value but the standard deviation is not. It's a standard deviation of the values in the data divided by the square root of n. Okay. So you take the standard deviation of the original data, which is uh, 14, and you divide it by the square root of 49. Obviously, you can do that in the calculator. This one just happened to work out to be a nice, neat whole number because square root of 49 is 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. But, you know, obviously you didn't have to know that. You just put it in the calculator and it ends up being, a lot, a lot of time, most of the time, these are going to be, you know, decimal answers. That was kind of a fluke. But therefore, anyway, that's what, that's the reason why answer A is correct here. The population mean of the sample means is 100, but the population standard deviation of the sample means is 2. All right. So let's don't make that mistake. I like to always put that on a test, and I suspect it should be in the homework. We'll see. But if it's not, even then, just be careful. Um, now, probability in the central limit theorem, uh, it just changes the z-score, which we're going to be using technology. The standard deviation will be divided by square root of n, but we will have to make sure we enter that into the, uh, the whatever technology we're using. So really, the, the only difference between this, and it's a major difference, is that we'll still be calculating probabilities the same way, you know, less than, greater than, um, using the same functions, um, norms, uh, normal CDF in the calculator, uh, norm, uh, wait, norm dist, yeah, norm dist in the Excel, but how we enter the standard deviation will be different. That's it. Now, a couple ways when we're looking at these problems, how, how do you recognize that the problem is X bar and not X? Okay, good question. How do you know the difference? Two, two key differences here. First thing is there'll be a sample size greater than one. So, for example, instead of choosing one house, we might choose 40 houses. Every problem we've done, previous sections of the normal distribution, you're always just choosing, you know, one item. What's the probability that, I can't think of an example, I could bring up the notes, but uh, one was like light bulbs, I think, and the example of the notes, the problem that a light bulb lasts longer than a certain number of hours, or that may, I think that was one of them, but anyway. But now it'll be selecting more than one. <sighs> And the instructions will say, find the probability that the mean, may say average, but mostly it might say mean 
mean is less than, greater than, or, or between two values. So those two things together indicate that it's going to be this sort of problem where the standard deviation is the thing that's affected. It's going to make a difference. Make, make a difference. So, um, so let's look at this. Um, and I'll, I won't save this in the notes. Actually, I've learned that if you highlight stuff and you save it to PDF, sometimes it blocks the word, but I'm going to do it now and then just so we can see. All right. Uh, no, this is already, it's already normally distributed. Mean 12, standard deviation of 0.2. If a sample of nine cups is selected, here we go. There's your clue. We're selecting more than one. And then find the probability that the, click this, that the mean, the mean of the sample will be greater than 12.1. So we're saying we're selecting uh, nine cups, and what's the probability that the average of those nine cups will be greater than 12.1? So that's how we recognize is this kind of problem. I've got it sort of written out in an old school way here. Um, Okay, you don't have to work it this way, obviously, but here it is using the technology. But see, this this is but this first part's good. We don't need all the converting it to Z or whatever because we're taking care of that. What no matter what we're using down here, but yes, that's saying the probability instead of X. Now it's saying the probability of X bar is greater than twelve point one. So in the calculator, I have it there, but I'll go ahead and do this one so we can see it. Normal CDF. All right, the same principle works here for greater than. You have to put 12.1 and then going to positive infinity, which will be the one and the second comma to bring up the E. Okay, that's still the same. Mean is 12. Here is where the difference lies from a calculation standpoint. You don't put 0.2 in here. You put 0.2 divided by the square root of 9 because the standard deviation is 0.2, uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is 9. So that's, that's already, you can see it in the notes there. I won't leave that up there too long, but there it is. And we have 0.0668. Um, means we got a 6.6% chance that it's going to, we get 12 cups that average that high. Yeah, it should be a fairly low probability because, you know, if you get 12 cups, you're probably going to, I mean, not some, nine cups, I'm sorry, probably expecting some to be above, some to be below, you know, the average, but to get them to be that good would make the probability kind of low. Now, in norm dist, uh, you still have to do it the same way you would. It would be 1 minus. It's always uh, 1 minus. You know, it doesn't have the feature of the calculator where you can just change the order, you know, for the lower and upper and put either negative or positive infinity. It, it only understands less than, so to make it like greater than, you have to go 1 minus. Um, so well, I guess I could type this one in real quick. I won't type all these in here, but. Oh, here's, well, here's one pretty close. I think that's one for a problem we're going to see here in a little bit. Um, so I probably won't redo that when we get to it. So come over here, and it was 12.1. And the mean is 12. Standard deviation, oh, this problem just happened to also be 9 there. So you see square root 9 is SQRT. That's your square root function. Um, and there you have it. And you see the 0, 6, 6, 8. Yeah, so now you can easily see how to handle the square root right there. And there we have it. 
Now, we added a part, sort of a second part to this problem, said, okay, what if it was uh, the probability of selecting one cup and then finding the probability of one cup being greater than 12.1 ounces? Okay, so this, this goes back then to 5.2. This is not from the new section because it's not asking about the mean. So uh, we would do it the way we did it before. And you see the normal CDF, the commands are all the same, but you don't have 0.2 divided by the square root of 9. You just have 0.2. Um, and same thing with norm dist. You don't have, it's still 1 minus and all that. You don't have 0.2 divided by square root of 9. You just have 0.2 and you get 0 0.0. 0 0.3085, you got about a, almost a 31% chance. Now, I'll explain why this is higher. You don't have to worry about that too much, but I just sort of explain. It's just it, it, kind of going back to what I was explaining in the last one. It's, it's more likely that you would, it, you would get one cup that had a little extra coffee in it. If that's more likely. Uh, than it would be to get nine of them whose average is that good, in other words. Like I was talking about, you know, mentioning that if you get nine, you probably expect some to be above, some to be below, but you might get lucky, 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 lucky if you get one of them that fits that, you know, you have a better chance that one of them will. So, but that's, you don't have to understand any of that. Just as long as you understand how to make the calculation, that's fine. But I just thought I would throw that in there. Okay, once again, I left the old school way to do it in there. I just didn't feel like erasing it. I figured it'd be okay to leave it. Um, weights of fish are normally distributed. Mean of 11, standard deviation of 6. Four fish are selected. Uh, what's the probability that the mean weight will be between 8.6 and 8.4? So we're selecting more than one item. And then asking for the probability that the mean weight, the average of those. So it's anytime that you know we're selecting more than one item, it's got, it will follow with the wording probability that the mean. It might use average there, but so those two together. But you really don't have the first one. You know, the second one's going to come after the first one, meaning more than one. Oh, another video is ready. All right. So, um, between in the calculator, you put the lower number and you put the upper number. You put 11 in there for the mean. But here again, it's the calculator, uh, the calculator, the, I mean, the, 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 the fact that we have a sample size here and we're calculating X bar. So you put in, it's not, you don't put in six for the standard deviation. You have to put in six divided by square root of four. And there spits out six, seven, three, zero, six, seven, three, one, close enough. It's correct. Now in uh, Excel, uh, even before when we're doing norm dist, when you're doing between, you don't have quite the luxury you do in the calculator. We can just put the lower and the upper, and that's it. You've got to treat it as the upper one minus the lower one. But you see, so I have 14.6, 11. You see, I have six divided by square root of four, so that's the same as the calculator. And then norm dist, the lower is 8.6, 11, six divided by square root of four there. So everything technology-wise is the same. You just have to know for these problems that you're adding in the dividing by the square root of n for your standard deviation. All right. All right, a study amount of time it takes a mechanic to rebuild a transmission for a 1992 Chevy Cavalier shows that the mean is 8.4 hours. And the standard deviation is 1.8 hours. If 40 mechanics are randomly selected, find the probability that their mean rebuild time. So 40 are selected, probability that their mean rebuild time exceeds 8.7 hours, which is a fancy way of just saying greater than. All right. 
Now, notice nowhere in this problem does it say anything about being a normal distribution. So we allowed to, to use a normal distribution to solve this problem, or can we just say we can't really do it with any accuracy? Here's where the central limit theorem is kicking in. The first two problems, the ends were less than 30, but they both said that the uh, data was normally distributed. So we were good that n was less than 30. We didn't care. But here's where we need the central limit theorem. And, and I mentioned right there. So that's what allows us then to use the normal distribution. Is because the n is more than 30. I mean, so the fact that it didn't say normal distribution, uh, in the question, that's okay as long as n is more than 30. Anyway, so there it is, worked out the old-fashioned way. The calculator, it's greater than, so you would start with the lower number, which is 8.7. You would go to 1e to the 99 to represent your positive infinity. Your mean is 8.4, and your standard deviation is, uh, we're selecting 40 mechanics, so it's 1.8 divided by square root of 40. And there we have it. And uh, this answers off a bit, and I've mentioned before, it's because of the rounding the Z to two decimal places and using the chart. So it makes these answers that I didn't put the, uh, I guess I could put the norm disk answer here. Um, and that way, just paste it right over there. So here we'll come up to this one, 8.7. I think it was 8.7, 8.4, we had, uh, I believe it was 1.8 was the standard deviation, uh, I, wait, oh, we got to get rid of that zero, and square root of 9 when I'll be 40. Okay, that was it, 1499, and I can copy that in there, and I'll paste it right on top of. All right. See, so like I said, the technology does it you know, more accurately because it can use you know more decimal places of the Z. Excellent. Here's a red meat problem. 196 for the mean, 22 for the standard deviation. If a sample of 50 individuals is selected, what's the probability the mean of their sample will be less than 200 pounds? So we're selecting more than one, 50. Uh, and then find the probability that the mean of the sample just like the last problem, it does not say anything about the normal distribution in this problem. However, the n is 30 or more. It's 50. So that makes x bar be normally distributed. So in other words, you could not really accurately do this and say, I mean, you could calculate it, but it's not valid really to say what's the probability that one person consumes less than 200 because we don't know that the data not necessarily normally distributed. But the central limit theorem says, well, with 50 people, we're confident then that the average fits the normal distribution, and we can make a calculation for that. So like I said, even though you could do it for one person, it's not valid if we don't know that it's normally distributed. So less than, calculator means we start um, negative 1e to the 99 for negative infinity, we go to 200. Uh, means 196, standard deviation will be 22 divided by square root of 50. And then there's the answer once again, a little bit off due to rounding, but. And then um, we have 9015 versus uh, 
9007. And, and norm disk, so here it's just norm disk because it's less than. So in other words, it's norm disk when it's less than, once again, remind you. It's one minus norm disk when it's greater than, and then it's norm disk to the upper minus norm disk to the lower whenever it's between two numbers. Two hundred, one ninety six, twenty two divided by square root of fifty, and there you go. So that matches the calculator answer. So let's see what we have here. Problem number six. Heights of women normally distributed mean 63.6. Standard deviation of 2.5. 75 women are randomly selected. Find the probability that they have a mean height between 63 and 65. So 63 for the lower. 65 for the upper. 63.6 for the mean. Standard deviation, 2.5, divided by square root of 75. Don't, yeah, so divide by square root, and we get 9812. And then you see it's norm disk of the upper, 65, 63.6, 2.5, divided by square root of 75, minus the lower, 63, 63.6, 2.5, square root of 75. And I didn't put the answer here, so... I can do that real quick. Let's pause the video. All right, so I didn't want you to have to waste time watching me retype all that because obviously I knew there was a lot to type for this one. So, so the, it was already there correctly, and now I just made it to where I could get it back in there so I could display the answer with it. So there we go, 0.9812. Let's take a look at this one. Sort of has a two-parter in a way here. Let's see. Package of sugar, average weight of 16 ounces, standard deviation of 0.3. Weights of the sugar bags are normally distributed. What is the probability that nine selected packages will have a mean weight in excess of 16.025. So see this this one it's uh, it's less than 30 so the problem is telling us the data is normally distributed. So it doesn't affect how we do it but it just you know makes it right to have it you know expressed that way. More than 30 or more really basically it doesn't have to say it's normally distributed but it could. All right, so greater than more than so there's uh, how we would express it symbolically x bar greater than 16.025 versus the other section when it was x. And 16.025 would be your lower, upper would be 1e to the 99. Mean is uh, 16. Standard deviation, 0.3. Divided by square root of uh, 9 in. So you see right there, that's important. Paste that out. And then there we have it. And 0 0.4013 right there. Answer C. And because it's greater than in Excel, you got to do 1 minus norm dist. 16.025 is your X bar. Your mean 16. There's 0 0.3 over square root of 9. Always true here. There it is. For, uh, 4013, so that's good. And this one is sort of a, like a percentile problem. Well, it is, a, it is a percentile problem, but using this method, the only difference in that now, once again, is just going to be the logic will be the same. It's just dividing, you know, by the square, square root of n. That's going to be the only difference here. So, all right. 
And for the problem above, there's a 30% chance that the sample mean of the packages is, is above what value? See, the, the picture's not mandatory, but I kind of like to draw it sometimes just to kind of get a feel to make sure I realize what's going on. So I'm saying, I, I look at this and go, okay, I shaded 30% above my value. That means 70% would be below. Um, so 70th percentile. So calculator, you do inverse norm, 0.7, 16, 0.3 divided by square root of 9, same as above, and, and then of course where the left doesn't have to be there, and you get 16.05, and here you do norm inverse, same thing, it'd be 0 0.7, 16, 0 0.3, Divided by square root of 9, 16.05. So if it weighs right at 16 point, however many decimals you want, 16.0524, whatever, that's the mark where 30% uh, of the bags will weigh more than that and 70% will weigh less. Um, and this has a problem has a, has a low standard deviation, which is good because if you're in a business, you're trying to produce this, you know, you kind of would want, you, would, you don't want to be selling 16 ounce bags where one of them may be, 12 ounces, the other might be 20 ounces. You know, you want them to be very, very close to 16 at all times. So, well, that concludes. Oh, let me double check here. Yes, that concludes the lecture. It's now homework time. Hooray. So let's take a look at what we got here. Finding probabilities for sampling distributions of the mean. So let's see what we have. I'm going to start with this one. And mean is 96, standard deviation is 0.3. Now, part A here is going back to normal distribution part 2, because you notice there's no sample size here. Whenever there's a sample size, that's when we have to adjust the standard deviation. The standard deviation is always the square root, divide, uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n. But this one is just a regular um, normal distribution. So it's uh, greater than 96.07. So in the calculator, um, do a normal CDF. And greater than, so I got to put the 96.07 first. Upper 1e e to the 99. Mean is 96. Standard deviation is 0.3. And let's see what we have. Let's check this in Excel. Here's the greater one, for greater than, the 1 minus, 96.077, and 96. And 0.3 or 0.03? 0.3. And then, of course, true. Four zero. So if they want four decimal places, it will be four zero seven eight. Wonderful. So, like I said, that was from really from another section, but that's good. I like that because now it leads into this next part, which is essentially is the same question. But the, you see, the first one, A, says what's the probability that A randomly selected board? That means one. 
Now, this one's saying what's the probability that their mean length, the average length of 39 boards, which now means your, your random variable is x bar, not x. And we only have to make one change here, one very important change, the standard deviation. So standard deviation now is not just 0.3, it's 0.3 divided by the square root of 39. So we have to remember to do that. All right, so um, let's see what Excel looks like. Now, Excel will, will use, there really isn't a separate type of command for this. So we just use that same one I used right there, and I'll just hit, uh, and you'll see it when it pops up there. I'll just hit divide by SQRT39. Yeah, it's not really a separate sort of function or anything. 7-2. 0725. Yep, I like it. Both of them say 0725. Excellent. Let's take a look at this next one. So now it's just, this is just, yeah, just giving us without words. You know, essentially giving you the symbols, nothing that matters, but X bar, okay, that's pretty clear that we're talking about the sample mean, and you see there's a sample size of 16, less than 92. So I've got to change that to negative 1 EE 99. Upper number is 92. The mean is 105. Standard deviation for x is 20, but we want x bar, so it's 20 divided by the square root of 16. And I guess if you happen to realize that that equals 4, you could just say 20 divided by 4, but you're not required to know that. Just in case anybody out there was thinking, couldn't I have just put 4 there? Yes, you could have. And then let's use the less than one, which is right here. And 92, 105, and then 20 divided by, I'll just be consistent here and pretend like I didn't know that was 4 again. <laughs> Want to do it the same way both times. How about that? 0047 rounded to four decimal places. Um, I like it. Hopefully it likes us. Hooray! Between 92 and 92.5. So everything's kind of set up for us in the calculator. You can change that real easily. 92. All right, super quick. All right, let's see. Now in Excel, I find this to be less fun in Excel for this particular one just because I got to change the standard deviation and everything. Everything has to change in several places here. I'm not trying to steer you one way or the other, but 95, it was just more typing here than it is for the calculator. And 
and then over here it'd be 92. One oh five twenty divided by square root of sixteen. All right, point zero one eight one rounded should be it. Oh, crud, okay, you were probably yelling at me through the screen. I couldn't hear you. Um, I see now. It was not, I don't know why I got 95 from it. It was 0015. Okay. I'm not going to go back over to Excel for that one because you saw me enter it. So now I think you'd be able to see that you could just correct that one I did in Excel by just changing that those second numbers to 92.5. Uh, so that's all it was. So I won't worry about doing that one in Excel. But I'll do it both ways for this one. Greater than 105.6. And then one and here's the greater than so the one oh five point six. And we're still dealing with the same, yeah, 20 and 16 there, okay, yeah. I keep forgetting we're still in that same problem. Twenty and then sixteen right there. Well, hopefully last time they were both wrong with my fault, but both wrong. So this time they're both matched. Even though they matched, they were both wrong. But let's hope I got it right this time. Four, five, two, two. Hooray! 70% chance that X is above what value? Alright, above, then it's going to be it's a 30th percentile question. So we have to do the, uh, in the calculator, we would do the inverse norm. Area of 0.3, or I could, well, okay, I could say 1 minus 0.7 just to show you. It doesn't matter, but. And the mu was uh, 105. And standard deviation is 20 divided by square root of 16. Let's see what we get up here. Norm inverse. So I can do 1 minus 0 0.7 there. And 105 and 
20 divided by square root of 16. All right, that looks good. Let's see how many does it want. Two thousand places, I think. 102.38. Ta-da! Let's see what else we got here. How many parts does this one have? Well, okay. I don't think there's anything too special about this one for me to necessarily need to do. Obviously, if you let me know if you need have any questions. But one thing I will mention, though, is that standard error, and I'll show you in the calculator. I don't need to put this in Excel. Standard error is just what that standard deviation divided by the square root of mean, square root of the n is actually called. Standard deviation over square root of n is called a standard error. I think, I, I mean, I think I mentioned it briefly in the notes there, the, the definition, but... Um, so I'll, I'll just do that. And so for this one, it's um, so it's 0.45 standard deviation divided by um, square root of so 34 theaters. So the rest of those are pretty straightforward, I think. So, and now you can see the 0 0.0772 that matches. So. Well, all right, that's going to conclude section 7.2, sample means, sampling distribution of the sample means. All right.